Welcome back to Code Station 33. Today we are going to continue our conversation about for loops and we are going to look at a very special version of the for loop today. So we're going to dive right into code here. Get my monitor up. There we go. So we have an Arduino set up just like we have in the past. Uh, there is no circuits added to this. There's no LEDs. We're really just interested in the serial output again today. I have set up a variable called incoming string that was from an artifact from before. So we actually don't even need that today. So I'm going to delete that. And then we have our serial monitor start in our setup. And then we're going to jump right into our void loop. So the first thing I'm going to do is print counting up. Then I have my for loop. I'm going to initialize the i at 0. And my limit is i is less than 3001. Now we'll get back to why I said 3001 in a minute. Then instead of doing i++, plus plus, I do something different. This is another unary operator. And it's i plus equals 50. So let's write out what that means. It means i is equal to i plus 50. So this is another short way for the programmer to write out a long statement. It also allows us to incorporate it inside of a for loop. We wouldn't be able to write that assignment statement i equals i plus 50 inside the for loop. So instead they created this really cool kind of unary operator that is called plus equals. There's also a times equals, there's a minus equals, uh, there's a divided by equals. Those are all unary operators. The two that we're going to be interested in today are plus equals and minus equals. And again, to remind you, plus equals 50 is going to take 50 and add it to i and then store it back into i. And then all we're going to do in this loop that is going to go for counting by 50s up to 3000 is print i. Now let's talk about why I said 3001. When I get to 2950, i is still less than 3000. If I want to include 3000 in my counting up, I need to go a little bit bigger than 3000. I don't need to go to 3050. I just need to go one more than 3,000. So that way when I take 2,950 plus 50, it gives me 3,000, which is less than 3,001. So my counter will start at zero, print the zero, and go all the way up to 3,000 printed onto the screen. Now let's look at the countdown. The countdown is going to do the same thing, counting down. But notice I put in a two second delay. This is going to allow me to see the word counting down appear on the screen before it actually counts down. Then I'm going to do another loop, but this time I'm starting at 3000. And here I did something different. I did i is greater than or equal to zero. I'm allowed to do that type of condition inside the for loop. Another way of doing that would have been i is greater than negative one. That would allow me to get all the way back down to zero. If I don't include the equal to sign or I don't list it as negative one, then I cannot get all the way back down to zero. It'll stop at 50. And I want to make sure I get all the way back down to zero. Last piece of that is the i minus equals 50. And again, let's write this out. This means i is equal to i minus 50. That's what is actually going on in this unary operator. Get rid of that. Then I'm going to do a print line, a little delay of 100 milliseconds and an exit zero. Remember we talked about exit zero before, it's our break statement to get out of the void loop so it will not do any more looping again. If I left that out, what would happen is it would start the counting up again and then do the counting down again. But I don't want to do that, I just want it to count up and then count down and then stop. So I have my delay of 100 just to make sure it gets the last number printed on the screen. That's 100 milliseconds before I do the exit zero. Then of course I have my closing brace in order to end my void loop. 
So let's see how this works. I'm going to start my serial monitor, make sure it's cleared out, start my code simulation, and you see it very quickly counted up, and now it's going to count down. And that's it. And we can see if I scroll back up here, it did start at zero, it did say counting up, and it is counting by 50s. It is very useful often in code to count by something other than ones. Sometimes we want to count by odds. Sometimes we want to count by evens. Choosing where we start is also going to be important for things like that. So we know if we're counting by evens, we're counting by twos, but we have to make sure that we start on a zero or a two. And if we're counting by odds, we have to make sure we start on a one in order to count up by odds because one plus two is three. So this is the end of our adventure here in for loops, but for loops are really, really useful. Uh, we can actually even put a for loop inside of a for loop, but that's more of an advanced topic that we probably will talk about later. That's all for today. I'll see you next time.